In just a few moments, we're going to be reading together from 1 John chapter 5. And I would encourage you to take a Bible, have it open there toward the end of our Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. There are two different ways to follow along with many of the things that we're talking about this evening. Of course, the bulletin that we make available each week on the inside, the right side of that, you see a basic sketch outline of where we are going to be. We also made our booklets available for the year, our theme booklets available earlier this morning. If you have not gotten one of those, I would encourage you to get one on your way out of the building this evening. They're on the welcome table in the foyer. We have plenty of those there. and We'll be referencing some of the things that are listed there this evening. We would encourage you to take those home and look over them and mark your calendars so that you're ready to make the most of this year, even the way that we have been singing together this evening. If the Lord wills, 2015 will be full of all sorts of opportunities. In those theme booklets, on page 3, we've got listed date after date, After date, bullet point after bullet point, many different opportunities that, Lord willing, we hope to take advantage of setting our minds on victory. We spent a good amount of time this morning talking about victory in Jesus, the pathway to victory, the idea that victory has been made available by Jesus, and because of the victory of Jesus, there is victory to be found in Jesus. And so we looked at what it means to be in Jesus, and especially steps along the way to victory. This evening, we want to make it as practical as we can, and really nothing new, nothing earth-shattering, but kind of like a visit to the doctor, just a little bit of a checkup, And look forward to all sorts of disciplines and opportunities, practically speaking, that can lead me and can lead you to victory in 2015. We've got our Bibles open there to 1 John chapter 5. You begin reading with me in verse 1. It's toward the end of John's little letter, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1. He writes this, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Notice the things that John connects. Our love for God. And our love for one another. Victory and our faith. The walk that we are being called to walk in the footsteps of the Son of God. And he particularly zeroes in on the idea that victory is available through faith that has overcome the world. What can we do? This week, what can we do this month? What can we do this year? Having set our minds on victory that is available through Jesus, what sort of disciplines do we need to engage in? What sort of opportunities do we need to maximize in order to make sure that the victory John is talking about is ours personally? You open your Bibles with me, if you will, back to the book of Romans chapter 10, where we will read in just a moment. Discipline number one ought not to come as any surprise whatsoever. It ought to be as fundamental to the child of God as eating. And that's Bible reading. Do you have a plan for 2015? When it comes to reading God's Word. 
Are you going to take the time to feed yourself day by day, week by week, in order to develop your faith so that you can share in this victory? We've got a plan that is readily available. There are many, many, many plans out there. And it may be that you have a plan that works for you. That's all well and good. As long as you're disciplining yourself, feeding yourself, taking advantage of the opportunity to feed your heart and to feed your soul so that your spirit is nurtured and you can grow in order to attain that victory. The plan that we outline in our booklets on page four is really very, very simple. It is continuing momentum that we have had now for several years. Very simple and straightforward. On Sundays, we read a psalm to prepare our hearts for worship. On weekdays, Monday through Friday, a chapter from the Gospels to fix our eyes on Jesus. A chapter from Acts or one of the New Testament epistles to refresh ourselves on what it means to be followers of Jesus. And a chapter from the Old Testament to expand our knowledge of God's great plan to save mankind. Three chapters on a weekday. You can do that more often than not in 15 minutes or so. On Saturdays, a chapter from the Proverbs to help us grow in wisdom. Touch points all over the Bible. It is a plan that is available month by month. It is right there on the welcome table in the form of our calendars. It is freely available online. So easy to access. I encourage you to ask. Do I intend to feed myself tomorrow with words of God that matter the most? Why do they matter? We've got our Bibles open to Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. God's word is the source and the fortifier of faith. Romans 10 and verse 17. Faith comes from the hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. We began with John connecting faith to victory. If we want to be victorious, it is faith faith that is able to help us overcome this world that is full of so many trials and tribulations. What will you do tomorrow and Tuesday? What will I do tomorrow and Tuesday to build my faith? You open your Bibles back to 1 Peter chapter 1 where we will read together in just a few moments. God's Word produces life. John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Where we've got our Bibles open to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, Peter writes to Christians and he says, You have been born again. Verse 23, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable. You have been born again through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all its glory, like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this is the word, the good news that was preached to you. It matters most of all because it is God's word that produces life. We listen to Jesus in John 6 and verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you. We take the time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every weekday this year, this suggested calendar, a chapter from the Gospels to fix our eyes on Jesus. 
Because Jesus said, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. The reason that we take the time every weekday to read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John is because in John's own words, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. It is God's Word that gives us hope. What was written in former days, Paul says in Romans 15, was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. It is God's Word that leads to freedom. John 8 and verse 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He prayed in John 17 and verse 17, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Open your Bibles with me, if you will, back to the book of Proverbs chapter 1 in our 8th through 12th grade class. This morning, they began a six-month quest through the book of Proverbs. Why is that? Why are we encouraging our 8th through 12th graders to pay attention to the book of Proverbs, to read the book of Proverbs this week? Why are we encouraging parents and grandparents to be aware of what their 8th through 12th graders are studying and even to engage with them in that study? Very simple reason. God's Word is a matchless fountain of of wisdom. We listen to the very introduction of it. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 2, the purpose of all of this is to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. You go with me a few pages later to Proverbs chapter 7 where we find that God's Word provides crucial warnings. Why are we encouraging these maturing hearts? Why will we as adults throughout this year go back and revisit Proverbs together? Why are we dedicating ourselves every Saturday to read one chapter in Proverbs? Crucial warnings like Proverbs 7 and verse 1. My son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call insight your intimate friend to keep you from the forbidden woman. From the adulteress with her smooth words. How many marriages will suffer shipwreck in 2015 that might not have suffered shipwreck if men and women would take the time to read Proverbs chapter 7? You want to protect your marriage? You want to protect your home? You want to guard your heart? Realize this is the fortifying power. God's Word provides crucial warnings. God's Word enables us to defeat the devil. Jesus looked at some people of His own age and He said in John 8, You are of your father the devil and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar, he is the father of lies and this world is full of lies. What will you do this week to fill your heart with truth in the midst of a world full of lies. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Where will it sit? between now and Wednesday, between now and Sunday. 
You go back with me finally along these lines to the book of Psalms, back to Psalm 1, the very beginning, where once again we have introduced why every first day of the week on our Bible reading calendars we read a psalm. It's because God's Word fertilizes great and lasting joy. Do you not feel the joy that you would like to feel in your heart? Is your heart struggling with weeds and roots of bitterness and resentment and anger and uncertainty? Go to the Psalms. Live in the Psalms in 2015. Blessed is the man, Psalm 1 verse 1 tells us, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Do you want to be stable for your own good and the good of those around you? Do you want to be fruitful in 2015? Do you want to avoid withering in those aspects of life that matter the most? Do you want this to be the best year that it can possibly be? Open your Bible. It is an amazing opportunity that can lead you to victory this year. You open your Bibles with me back to James chapter 5. Do you want to be the sort of person that God would have you to be? Individually and in relation to other people throughout 2015, be a person of prayer. For the last six or seven years at least, Near the end of our booklets, every year, th this year it's on page 21 in our, our theme booklets, we talk about the power of prayer. A and we encourage you, we, we challenge you to be very specific. I I'll just read to you the paragraph. You know dozens of people in desperate need of responding to the gospel, do you not? Your heart grieves as you think of brothers and sisters who have walked away from God. Have you prayed for them? What could happen if you did? Remember, we've got our Bibles open to James 5 and verse 16. James encourages us, charges us, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. With that truth in mind, pick a different person each month and pray for them every single day. Pray for receptive hearts. Pray for opportunities. Pray for wisdom. Pray for boldness. Pray that God might use you to impact them. What could happen in 2015 if you devoted yourself to prayer as you never have before? Here's what we do know. The pathway to victory will be greatly hindered if we don't think to pray. You go with me in your Bibles back to the book of Acts chapter 2. Disciplines and opportunities that can lead you to victory in 2015. Hospitality. On page 22 in our booklets, in an effort to serve through hospitality. Why not invite someone each month into your home in an effort to grow in relationship and develop closer relationships as family? Why not invite someone out for a meal? 
once a month, whatever that dynamic looks like, spending time together. That's what the earliest glimpses of the church, one of the aspects that is, it it makes up that picture. Acts chapter 2 and the 46th verse of the chapter, these people who have newly dedicated themselves to walking with God through Jesus Christ, verse 46, day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. How hospitable were you in 2014? And if you don't have the relationships with other people that you would like to have, if you chose to be hospitable in 2015, how much closer could you be? We go in our Bibles back to Acts chapter 20. Finally, this idea of service. We've sung together this evening, make me a servant just like your son. He was a servant. Please make me one. And so once again on page 22 in our booklets, we encourage you to make this personal to have a goal, to discipline yourself and take advantage of the opportunity. Where are the opportunities to make a difference by serving? A family of this size is full of opportunities. Can you host a singing or a Bible study? Can you help an elderly brother or sister around their house? Can you visit someone who is shut in? Who could use an extra dose of encouragement this month? Paul takes us back in Acts chapter 20 to principles that are modeled by Jesus himself. Words that were spoken by Jesus himself. Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way we must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Parents, will our children, will we be able to say that at the end of 2015? In all things I have shown you as your father, as your mother, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Will we show that as Bible class teachers to our young people? We have shown you throughout 2015, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Do you have a plan? Don't just stumble through this year aimlessly, mindlessly, heartlessly. There is a wealth of opportunity laid out before us. Basic disciplines, Bible reading, prayer, hospitality, service, have the potential to lead us to victory. One of the very first opportunities is this evening at the very end of our assembly. On page four in our booklets, we talk about our care groups for 2015. Could I encourage you to take that seriously? We're doing our best to grow in that and refine that and, and, and make the most of that opportunity. We need your help. As we've got listed on page four, church is not somewhere we go on Sundays. Church is who we are. We're a body with many members. We're family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ who are called to care for one another. As family, our Heavenly Father wants us to love one another earnestly from pure hearts. As a unified body, our head has called us to pursue mutual upbuilding. In the language of Philippians 2, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Here's one practical way that we can serve. Our Lord as members of his body and look out for the interests of each other. We encourage you to take advantage 
of those opportunities. If you've got suggestions about further opportunities, we encourage you to make those known. We want to be the best individuals, the best families, the best church family that we can possibly be in 2015. That requires you and your involvement. I appreciate so much your attention throughout the day. As I mentioned, we appreciate so much all of the work that has gone on in recent months to get us to today so that we can get our minds focused on who we are and whose we are and what matters most. If you've got any questions whatsoever about anything in these booklets, any of the opportunities that are coming up, we encourage you to make those known. This evening we want to make sure that as the day closes on this first Sunday of 2015, you have your life right with God. In Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20, God's prophet laments, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Could it be said of you this evening? The harvest is past. 2014 is ended. And I am not saved. If that is the case, there is nothing. Absolutely nothing more pressing this year. This evening than getting your life right with God. We want to make sure that you have that opportunity this evening. When people asked the question in Acts chapter 2, what shall we do? They were told, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. January 1st and 2nd and 3rd and nearly 4th, is ended. An entire year is gone. Are you saved? Do you need help? Can we pray with you and for you even this very evening? If there is any way that we can be of help, won't you take advantage of this opportunity by coming to the front while we stand and sing?